all of my classes since COVID started. So I'm glad that she's still here, but she'll be happy to know we're not talking about gardening today. We're talking about some other really important things before we get to the gardening, okay? So I am going to share my class with you. Give me guys just a second. Where is my link? Do, do, do. You guys, it's pretty soon. I have to tell you while I'm looking for the right link. Um, my goat is going to have babies. And so I'm going to get to show you guys all the little tiny goat babies when we're in class too. So be ready. It might not be this class. I'm not sure exactly when she's due, but if you come to my next series, I know Stone looks super excited. Baby goats are the best. Like they're the best. They make every day better. Okay, here we go. Here's our class today. Okay. Guys, today we're talking about two really important things. It is our very first class of five classes that we're going to talk about where we're going to talk about like, what does it mean to have healthy eating? Where does our food come from? How can we help our planet um, with the amount of food that we either grow or we don't waste and things like that? Okay, lots of different topics that we're going to talk about. Um, doo -doo -doo. So here we go. So today, this is what we're talking about. What is food waste, okay? What is composting and how can we do it? What can be composted and where does your food come from? Now, those sound like really simple things, okay? But they can get a little complicated. We do have a couple of videos we're going to watch today. I'm going to tell you one video is six minutes long. That's way longer than most of the videos I ever share in this class, but I feel like it's a really cool video and it's made by a bunch of elementary school kids and so I feel like it's a, I feel like you guys are really going to enjoy it, but I'm forewarning you that it is a long video compared to what I normally show. Skylar, what kind of face is that? I see that face, Skylar. All right, here we go. What is food waste and how can we help? So I want you to raise your hand and tell me if you can give me a definition, any definition, nothing's wrong about what does it mean to have food waste or to waste food? Anybody? Uh, let's see, Harper. Harper, can you unmute yourself and you can tell me what does it mean? What does it mean to waste food? What is food waste? When you're full, you don't want to eat your food. Yeah, totally, right? I mean, when I'm full, I don't want to eat the rest of my food. I want to save room for the ice cream, right? Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to save room for dessert, right? And so we end up <laughs> we end up wasting some of our food. That's a great that's a great example of food waste. Does anybody else have a different example of food waste? Um, okay, Gallegos family. Estre I don't know how you say your name, <laughs> but Gallegos family. You go ahead. Estrella. Okay, Estrella. Okay, got it. What is another um, example of food waste, love? Like, um, so like when you throw all your food away because you don't want to eat it and you don't like it and. Yeah, um, perfect. Do you, you can finish. You have something else you want to say? No. No, yeah, that's perfect. What if we don't like it? Like, maybe I don't like green beans and I don't want to eat my green beans and mom makes green beans and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm not going to eat it. That's a good example. How about another example? Maeve and Shyler, they're juicy. Well, at Dunkin' Donuts, I saw this video and they basically throw out all their donuts after one day and make new ones the next day. Oh my gosh, I love that example. That's totally different from what we talked about already. And that's a fabulous example of food waste. Thank you very much. That's a perfect one. Um, okay, last one we're gonna talk about for food waste today is Cristiano. Vasquez, do you know how to unmute yourself, bud? Perfect. Give me your example of food waste. Store, stores throw away expired food and stuff like that. You guys are amazing. Seriously, absolutely amazing. You're coming up with things I didn't even realize that you would come up with. So just like yeah. the Jerjuicy kids were talking about, um, we that's another example of stores really contributing to the waste as well. So those are fabulous examples. So we are going to move on in the presentation. And so this is just a little bit of facts for you guys, okay? So one third. So that means if we took everything that, that was produced, okay, one third of the food that was produced by humans and we cut it into three, one third of that, okay, 
is going to be wasted. That's a lot of food that we've either grown or created that is wasted, okay? We have to think about that. One third of the food that we produce and all the energy and time and resources like the water and the land and the money that went into growing all of that food and packaging it and shipping it all across the world and all across our country is wasted. We just don't eat it. We throw it away because it has a bad expiration date. We don't eat it because it has a little brown spot on it. We don't eat it because we don't want to eat the food that mom and dad made for us or grandma and grandpa made for us, right? So there's a lot of different ways that we, we are wasting our food. Um, and unfortunately, fruits and vegetables have the highest wastage rates of any food. So your fruits and veggies are the ones that get thrown in the trash can. Those bananas that look too brown to eat, instead of doing something else with them, we put them in the trash can, right? Not cool, not cool, guys. So here is a cool video I'm going to show you. Um, it's really short. This one's only one minute long, okay? So I want you to watch this. And I want you to think of something about this quick little video that you didn't already know, okay? So I want you to really think about one fact that you didn't already know, okay? Hold on real quick. Tell me if you guys, when I get it started, tell me if you can hear it, okay? I have a feeling I didn't click the right button. Thumbs up if you can hear it, ready? Hold on. Can you hear it, Michaela? Michaela, can you hear it? Watch what they're doing, guys. Uh, we cannot hear it. You cannot hear it. Thank you. That's exactly what For I mean. It's okay. You don't actually I need can't it. Hear it. No, it's okay. You don't actually it, need but... It's okay, Michaela. You don't yeah, actually but I have this It's also not moving for me. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's it's skipping pretty bad. Is it? All right, let's see. Hold on really quick. Um that's not good. I don't want it skipping. You actually don't need to hear it. Um, because there's really no words. It's more of watching what's actually happening in the video. I am going to turn my video off really quick while you guys watch this video and hopefully that makes it a little bit better uh, for the quality of the video, okay? So you guys won't be able to see me for a second. So hold on real quick. But watch what's happening in this video. See if you can figure out what fruit or vegetable is being processed on this farm right now. Celery. Mm -hmm. Celery, exactly. But watch what's happening. There's no it's, words. There's no words, so don't worry. You don't have to hear it. It's still skipping. Okay, let's just try. All right, Genesis, let's just try to watch it. I think that's just the way the video works, but you can still see what's going on. And then our celery is going inside. It's going into the factory. And it's getting put in the bags, just like we see at the grocery store, right? When you see celery at the grocery store, that's exactly what it looks like. But now look what happens when you go back to where the celery was growing. What's happening? Guys, Food can anybody TV. raise your hand and, and tell me if you can see what happened to all of that celery? Uh, it looks like it got like really cut off. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure who said that. But you said that perfectly right. It looks like they cut off a ton, right? And they left it in the field, right? So this is another kind of waste. Um, excuse me. That, oh, yes, who said excuse me? Me, Michaela. Okay, Mika what you need, Michaela? Um, when you, uh, I had a, something relating to something else you said earlier, like how if there was a brown spot. Mm-hmm on like your meat or something that was like mold. Um, even if you did cut it off or you still ate it, if that was bad mold, it would be bad for you. And even if you cut it off, the mold of the like the things that goes into um, the roots of the mold will mm -hmm. still be there. So then it still makes it so it's not that it still could be dangerous to your body and you can use the bananas 
for banana bread. It's true. And I, I'm banana going to bread. acknowledge what you're saying, Michaela. I think that in some aspects, you might be right. And in some aspects, really the brown spots on some of our fruits and vegetables aren't going to harm us at all. I'm not telling you to eat fruits and vegetables that have mold on them. That's definitely banana. a different a different Banana. situation, but brown spots, then we, most of them are going to be okay. Okay, guys. So what this video really just showed us is that food waste really starts before it even the food even comes to us. It doesn't have to be us that's wasting the food. It can be wasted at a, at a higher level, right? It can be wasted before it even reaches the grocery store. And so that's something we need to be conscious of as we start growing our own food and talking about growing foods in our backyards or on our porches or off of our balconies on our apartments, all of these things. We can make a difference in how much food is wasted by trying to grow some of our own own food. Okay. So that's really what we're talking about here. So we're moving on. Now, if we think about all this food, let's just talk about the fruits and vegetables, right? The fruits and vegetables that get wasted, they get thrown in the trash can uh, and nothing gets done with them, they're, right? They're in a bag, they get taken to the dump. Um, but there's something else that we can actually do with our fruits and vegetables that actually helps to grow more fruits and vegetables. It's pretty crazy. And a lot of us don't know about it. And it's actually called compost. So what I wanna know, is there anybody on this call, raise your hand, that knows what compost already is? So raise your hand. Okay, this is Me really do. difficult. Okay, hold on. I'm going through and I'm looking at people that are raising their hands right now. So I see, I'm gonna describe this young lady because she, her, she actually has my name on her screen. So I can't call her by her name, but she's got like light blue walls in the room that she's sitting on and she's got kind of long blue hair. Yep, that's you. I can see you know who it is. All right, go ahead and unmute yourself, love, and tell me what compost is. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, I thought she knew who she was. She's playing with some green Play-Doh. Do you want to tell me what compost is? <laughs> no? Okay, we'll go on to somebody else. Raise your hand if you guys know what compost is and you can share with the class what compost is. All right, Valerie, Valerie, why don't you guys tell us what compost is? It's like trash on the floor. Oh, trash on the floor. I mean, you got some of the key elements. We're talking about what could be trash and turning it into compost. So let's see if somebody else can add a little bit more details to that. How about er Ernie? Ernie, can you add some details for us? What is compost? Compost is something that is kind of like trash, but you're mm -hmm. like trying to make it into something good to eat. Oh, I'm loving the direction that you're going with that, Ernie, okay? Um, I'm going to acknowledge some of the people in our group chat too, because I see that um, Isabella said, is compost trash slash dirt? Oh, that's a, you're on the right track, Miss Isabella. You're on the right track. Um, and Juanita, of course, you can answer in the group chat. And I'm always trying to, sometimes I have to remind myself to go back and check the, the chat too, but you can definitely answer in the chat. Does anybody else want to add to what compost is before we watch this video? And this is the long video, the six you minute don't. video. Vio, who said that? I, I, me and my brother. All right. Is that Era and Jax? Yes. Okay, go for it, guys. Um, compost is like, sorry, um, compost is like food that's, is, that is wasted, and then it's like, it's like, um, compost is like, like the, the, um, like the orange peels. Okay, like orange peels. All right, fabulous. We are really getting far. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to make sure everybody mutes themselves really quick. I'm actually going to stop share on my screen share because I know why you couldn't hear um, my sound. And I'm going to fix that really quick because you do have to hear it for this next one. So this is the long video. Now I need everybody. Look at my eyeballs. Everybody look at my eyeballs. Are we paying attention? Give me a thumbs up if you're paying attention. Give me the eyes, give me the eyes right here. You got them, you got them, I'm watching you. I need you guys to find two facts, two things that you did not know in this video that I'm going to watch you. Watch, you guys are going to watch. It has a ton of information, okay? So don't try to remember everything. 
okay? Because there's a lot, but I want you to focus on two things that you didn't know. This is going to be part of your homework, okay? So you have to really focus on these two things. There's not a lot of homework, don't worry. I try to make my class fun, okay? After this long video, we're gonna play a game. So you do have to pay attention to some of the things that they're telling you, okay? Now you should, I'm also gonna take my video off. So hopefully it doesn't um, make this video choppy, okay? You should be able to hear it. If for some reason you can't hear it, send me a message on the group chat so I know you can't hear it, okay guys? Long video, prepare yourselves, okay? Here we go. Kindergarten and my name is Jasper. I'm in kindergarten and my name is Leica. I'm in kindergarten and my name is Atticus. I'm in kindergarten and my name's Skyler. And my name's Lindsay. And I'm Maya from the Highfield Center for Composting. We are going to teach you how to compost at your school. Or at home. It doesn't have to be at your school. What is compost? Compost is a pile of green organic matter, like food, garden waste, or manure, that has been mixed with brown organic matter, such as leaves, straw, or wood chips. Over time, the compost pile decomposes or breaks down into soil. Billions of tiny creatures help with this breakdown, including worms and fungus, and bacteria. Compost is very rich in nutrients and can be used in gardens and fields to grow crops and to heal soil. And why should we compost? Compost helps our world so it doesn't be all just loaded with trash. Garbage doesn't get used like compost does because garbage goes into a big pile wherever that is. These piles are called landfills. When you throw your food into the garbage, this is where it ends up. Landfills seriously affect our planet's air and our water. When sent to a landfill, Leftover food, also known as food scraps, will produce a gas called methane. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas that goes into our air and contributes to global warming in a big way. Greenhouse gases trap the sun's heat in our atmosphere and warm up our planet. Hotter temperatures can lead to melting ice caps, rises in sea level, and animals losing their homes. There is a lot of water in food. And when food scraps are put into the landfill, the water from the food combines with all the other items in the landfill to create a toxic sludge called leachate. Leachate can leak into groundwater and get into our rivers and lakes, harming the creatures that live there and dirtying the water that we drink or swim in. When we compost our food scraps, instead of sending them to the landfill, we reduce both the amount of methane and leachate created. But also, we conserve space in our limited landfills. In short, composting is much better for our planet. A closed food cycle is created by keeping food scraps out of the landfill. Food is grown, eaten, and then the food scraps are composted back into the soil to grow more food. So where do you put your food scraps? We put it in the compost buckets. They say compost only on them so people know to not put anything else in. Source separation is very important. That means keeping food scraps in a container by themselves. At your school, there will be a bucket to put food scraps specifically. It's very important to keep everything separated into the proper containers. For example, trash goes into the trash can and dishes go back to the kitchen. What goes in the compost bucket? You can put in carrots, apple cores, lettuce, cucumbers and tomatoes, orange, this, watermelon, strawberries, pizza and stromboli, ice cream, fish. You can also compost any of these. Meat and bones, eggs and eggshells, cheese, milk and other dairy products, bread, flour and pasta, butter, oils and fats, nuts and nutshells, soup and sauces, seafood and shells. Basically, anything that you can eat can go in the compost bucket. Some schools also have compostable napkins and dishes that can go in the compost bucket. Ask your teacher if you use these at your school. What does not go in the compost bucket? You cannot put plastic in compost. 
You cannot put milk cartons in the compost. You can't put in napkins. Metal cans. Glass jars. Paper plates. That's silverweight. Watering cans. <laughs> and don't forget to peel the little PLU stickers off of your fruit. Remember to check with your school, but in general, if it isn't food, it cannot be composted. So, no plastic, no paper, no metal, no wood, and no glass of any kind. So, what happens to the food scraps once they leave the school? All the tiny compost buckets, they'll empty it out into a big compost bucket that goes in the compost truck that goes to compost. Watering can. Wood and no glass of any kind. So what happens to the food scraps once they leave the school? All the tiny compost bucket they'll empty it out into a big compost bucket that goes in the compost truck that goes to compost. The food scraps leave the school and head to a compost facility where they are blended and made into compost. They sit for a year and turn into dirt made out of food. We've come a long way from the lunchroom, and now that the compost is made, what can compost be used for? Grows grass. Compost turns into flour. Compost can help your family grow vegetables. The compost helps grow food so you can grow taller. Or smaller. Don't you grow smaller! And that's it. It's just one big food cycle. Composting closes the loop on our food system creating a healthy, harmonious, and sustainable system for all of us to thrive. Thanks for watching! All right, what do you guys think? I'm going to stop screen sharing real quick so that I can see everybody in class, and I'm going to turn my video back on too. So it was a long video, right? But did you guys learn anything? Yes. Yes, okay. So I would like to know, I'm going to call on you, you got to raise your hand because I can see everybody now, okay? I want to know one fact. I know I asked you for two, but I'm going to choose on a couple people that haven't had a chance to talk yet. You know, it's really hard when we have this many kids in class trying to let everybody talk, but I want to say one thing that you learned. Okay. So first I see Naomi. Naomi, you want to tell me one thing that you learned today in that video? I did not know that food could make well soil. It's mind blowing, isn't it? It's crazy, crazy, absolutely crazy. Thank you for sharing that, Naomi. Uh, Mason and Parker, you wanna share one fact that you guys learned from the video? I learned that, oh. Uh, uh, it can, it goes to the com, there's a, there's a separate place to put compost. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't put it, you have a trash can and then you have a compost bin. Fabulous. Thank you, Mason and Parker. All right. Two more. Layla, James, and Abby, when you guys want to share something. I didn't know how many foods you can actually use to make compost. Yeah. That's actually the game we're going to play here in just a second. That's a good one. Do, does, uh, anybody else want to share at your house? I didn't know that there were compost uh, like compost companies. Yeah, you know, I actually didn't know that either. We're going to talk about a little bit about that after we're done sharing. Okay, uh, and James, did you want to share something, bud? No, okay, not this time. All right, last one is going to be Ethan and Rowan. And don't worry if you didn't get a chance to share, you're going to have to share it some other time on your homework anyways, okay? Or share it in the group chat and I can say it here in a little bit. Ethan and Rowan, do you wanna share something that you guys learned? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead guys. So I didn't know that, that that composting could stop a lot of that pollution of stopping animals from getting sick. It's so crazy, isn't it? I mean, composting mm -hmm. does so many things. It helps so many things in our environment. We should all be doing it, right? We should all be doing mm -hmm. it. And that's something we're gonna talk about. Thank you, Ethan, I appreciate it. All right, guys, I am gonna go back to our screen share. First, I am going to actually double check in our group chat. Um, let's see, Juanita said, I didn't know that chemical methane affects global warming. It does, and we're actually gonna talk a little bit more about that in another class. 
Um, I didn't know that water in the fruit scraps could collide with the trash and make super dirty water. Yeah, Ooh, that sounds stinky, actually. It sounds like it would be really gross. Um, before we start this game, what I want to tell you guys is that video was really based on like if it was at your school, right? And if you were doing it on a big level, but you guys can actually compost at home. It doesn't have to be taken to a big compost company like, like they talked about in the video. You can actually compost at home and make your own soil at home. So part of the homework, and I've actually already sent it to the parents before class started today so that everybody was aware, is I'm encouraging you guys to do a really easy do it yourself compost bin at home okay and try to start paying attention to the things that can stay out of the trash can and go into the compost bin instead okay and i think you guys are all going to be pretty good at it it's not required so don't go tell your parents like you i have to make a compost bin today and i need all of these things definitely don't do that be nice to your parents because they love you okay um but it's encouraged. So if you can, we should we should try to do it. OK, so we're going to play this game. This game is going to be um, the compost bin or the trash can. Dun, dun, dun. OK, so we have. Oh, who said excuse me? Um, me, Michaela. Go ahead, babe. Um, there's only a few things like all these apples that are very mushy that I don't eat, but we normally let my grandma's dog lick the plates. Yeah, that's a smart choice too. I also, yeah, that's a good good point, Michaela. We don't have a lot of it in the. Trash. That's good. That's she fabulous. Likes yeah. She likes salt. Yeah, and that's another. You know, just while Michaela's talking about animals and and food and stuff like that, like I compost at my house. But I also use a lot of my what could go in my compost bin and I actually give it to my chickens. So I'm still not wasting. The food waste isn't there. My chickens are eating it and then my chickens are making eggs, right? And so we're not wasting, but not all of mine goes to a compost bin. Anyways, because you can do that too if you have chickens. Now let's think about this. Compost bin starts with a C, trash can or recycle, but we're going to go with T for trash. So C or T. Okay, so in the group chat, when I say, oh my gosh, I totally left my list at home, this is going to be a real interesting game because I can't even tell you. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how this is going to work, guys, because I um, messed up and left a list at home because now I'm just going to have to tell you what it is. So here we go. It's not going to be as fun as I was hoping it was going to be because we were supposed to guess, of course, compost bin or trash can. But now, and once I click, you're going to see where it goes because I can't tell you what it is ahead of time because I don't have the list of what it's going to be. So we're going to do this a little bit different instead. Obviously, a banana peel goes in the trash can, right? Okay. So what I want you guys to do is tell me, trash bag, does it go in the trash can or does it go in the compost bin? C or T in the group chat? This should be pretty, pretty simple because you guys watched it. So we're not going to take very long on every single one. You guys are awesome. Ooh. How about a watermelon? C or T? C. 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 Yeah, you guys can unmute yourself and say it. That's fine. We'll go through this pretty quick. Okay, how about eggshells? C or T? T. C. C. Okay, yeah, you guys, you guys got this. Wait, T. Definitely in the compost bin. How about weeds? Now, this is a hard one. So this is a dandelion. I Let's pretend I picked it out of my front yard. I have the root. C. Should I put it in the compost bin or should I put it in the trash bin? Compost. Trash. You should put it. You should put it in a compost. You should put okay. it in a base in your house. Okay. Mute. 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 Everybody mute. Everybody mute. Say it. You gotta mute. I can't move on until you mute. Here's the trick with that one. Now, it is green. We talked about green things and brown things that go in our, our compost bin. Now, the tricky part about weeds, when you pull them up by their roots, we're actually putting that weed in a space. If we put it in the compost bin, we're putting it in a space that allows it to keep growing. We do not want weeds growing in our compost bin, okay? So we actually do not want to put fresh 
weeds that are picked out of our yard with the roots into the compost bin. We actually want to put them into the trash can. That was a tricky one. And I'm glad that I put that in there because I heard on both sides. Next one, ready? Why don't you put them in a vase? Mm -hmm. Well, you could put them in a vase. Okay, apple core, C or T? C. 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 You guys got that one. That one's C, C, C. Yeah, C, C, C. Okay, a tea bag. If you like to make tea at home, tea bag, trash or compost? Trash. Compost. 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 Mute yourselves. Mute yourselves. Compost. Compost. Everybody has to mute. Everybody has to mute. Oh, you guys are such good listeners. It only took like two seconds for everybody to mute. You guys are amazing. Absolutely amazing. This is another tricky one. The tea bag is actually in the trash. You do not want to put tea bags inside your compost bin. Okay. Um, I'm going on to the next one. Do not unmute yourselves. C or T in the group chat. Plastic forks and silverware. T or C. Don't, don't unmute yourself. We gotta stay muted. I think it was hurting some people's ears. I saw everybody covering their ears because it was so loud. So we're gonna try to stay muted, okay? That one's definitely trash or recycle, right? Lettuce, C or T. If you have a little bit of salad left over after your salad or it gets a little bit slimy in the fridge, I would give it to my chickens probably, but it would definitely go in the compost bin. I, I've noticed How problem. about, oh, you gotta mute yourself. How about leaves that we rake up in our yard? Now, if you were around for my fall classes, we talked about actually not raking up your leaves because it gives little animals like our little bugs and insects and sometimes little finches and birds a place to live in our yard. But if you do rake up your leaves, can they go in the compost bin or the trash? C or T? Ooh, you guys are amazing. You're like getting them all right. All right, absolutely amazing. Candy wrappers. C or T? Now, technically, tea. it's actually T. Most candy wrappers have like a shiny coating to them or a waxy coating. We don't want that inside our trash bins. We don't, I mean, I'm sorry, we don't want that inside our compost bins. That needs to go to the trash or the recycle. On the contrary, newspaper can actually go in your compost bin. It's actually really good. And the link that I sent to your parents to start your own compost bin actually says to start with some shredded newspaper on the bottom. So shredded newspaper can go inside your compost bin, but paper that has like that waxy feel like the Starburst wrappers, or if it's really shiny, like a Snickers bar or something like that, that can't go into the compost bin, okay? Um, what's our, what's our name? Water bottles. Water bottles, plastic water bottles, C or T? C. Cycle. Oh, you, yeah, whoever said recycle is actually 100% correct. It's trash or recycle, but definitely recycle for our um, water bottles. You are 100% correct. Um, excuse me? Yes. Um, what it, would printer paper work? Yes, printer paper. That's a really good question, Michaela. Printer paper can actually be shredded and put in there too. It's not shiny. It doesn't have that waxy coat. So anything that you, like if you printed something wrong or you're done with that paper, you colored on all the sides and there's nowhere else to color, you can shred it up and you can put it inside your compost bin. Absolutely. I that just was want to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, that was a really good question, Michaela. Really good question. Um, I put up a picture of pasta. Pasta can go in your compost bin. Wood chips. Now, this is, oh, somebody is not muted. Somebody has to mute themselves. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to find who is not muted because I can hear muted. a mom talking in the background. Okay. Um, wood chips. Now, the video that we watched said no wood at all, but that's actually not true. Wood chips are really good to start your compost pile as well. So wood chips and leaves and shredded up newspaper are a great bottom layer for your compost pile, okay? Our next one, that's a pickle or a cucumber. Definitely can go in the compost pile, right? Definitely, it's a fruit or vegetable. That's exactly what the compost pile is for. Um, we have an acorn, so really any nuts, um, Layla, did you have a question, babe? No? Okay. I thought I saw you raise your hand. Um, any nuts of any sorts with their shells or without the shells can be put in the compost pile. 
And this is a good one too, as we walk around the neighborhood and we see pine cones and pine leaves and things like our pine needles, they can actually go inside the compost pile too. There's so much that we can compost, okay, you guys? So, so, so much. Um, and I think you probably already knew a lot of that too, um, because it sounds like some of you were already smart on the compost um, topic. So that's a lot of information about composting. Like I said, you should not try to remember all of that information. I am sending it all to your parents. You will have the information so you can revisit it. And you always have my email address so you can ask for questions too. So if you want to start composting at home and you don't know how to get started with that, you can always email me and say, hey, Miss Sarah, this is what we want to do. Is this the right way to do it? And if I don't have the answer, I will look for the answer for you guys, okay? Um, my, mom for ordering, my mom was ordering a compost bin, so. Woo, woohoo, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. But don't feel like you have to order a compost bin too. The directions I'm gonna send to everyone is very simple. You can do it in just a, a plastic tote in your house or when well, you probably don't wanna do it in your house, but in your yard, you're on your front patio, on your back porch, but you don't have to buy a special fancy um, compost bin. You can just do it very inexpensive, okay? So don't feel like you have to go out and spend a ton of money to be able to compost the right way. We can do it. We can do it with almost no money at all, okay guys? Um, and I hope that some of you are actually going to try to do that, or at least pay attention to the things that we're throwing in our trash. Now, this is the last little part that we're going to talk about. Where does our food come from, right? We eat so much food, but sometimes we don't actually understand where it comes from. Today, we're going to focus on one thing. Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Oh, somebody has to mute. It's loud, guys. I can hear it. Um, it comes from plants. Oh, hold on, hold on. I didn't even get done with my question yet. It does come from a plant, but the question is actually, does anybody know where the bananas that we hear in the United States, right? New Mexico is in the United States. We don't grow bananas in New Mexico, right? So where do we get our bananas from? Because you can't just go to a banana farm down the street in Las Lunas or Berlin because we don't grow bananas here. It's not the right climate for bananas to be grown here, okay? So what I want is I want somebody that has not had a chance to speak yet and try to tell me where you think we get our bananas from here in the United States. Portland. Hey, I did not call on anyone. You gotta mute yourself. I got to call on you. If you already spoke today, put your hand down because I have to let everybody try to get a chance to speak, okay? So first I'm going to start with Lydia Taylor, even though I don't know that is not your name. That's probably your mom's name. Um, why don't you guys tell me where you think bananas come from? I think we get it from Hawaii. We get it uh, shipped from Hawaii and then uh, put in the store. I love that. That's a great idea. That's a great um, theory that you have. I'm actually, I, I don't recognize either of you boys. And so you probably don't know this, but I'm actually from Hawaii. So I grew up with banana trees in my very front yard and we could like climb up a tree and grab a banana for real, like really cool, right? Who, who says they that's can just cool. climb a banana tree in their front yard, right? Um, so that's a good guess. I want you to hold on to it. Okay, I'm about to tell you guys here in a little bit. All right, good guess. Brooklyn and Adeline, why don't you tell me where you guys think that uh, bananas here from the United States, where we get our bananas from? I think we get our bananas from like the tropical areas such as jungles. So can you tell me a country or maybe a continent that you think that it would come from? No. No, and that's okay, you don't have to. But I think using the word tropics is a good key. So we have Hawaii and we have the tropics. Now, Kamari, I would like Kamari, if I, tell me where you think that our bananas here in the United States come from. Um, hmm. A big farm? <laughs> big farm, okay, good. So now we have Hawaii, we have the tropics, 
We have a big farm. I'm gonna let one more person guess. Let me see who else is quietly raising their hands. Adelina. Adelina, do you wanna tell me where you think our bananas come from? They come from a farm. Okay, so we've got two guesses for a farm. Good job, Adelina. I'm gonna take one more, Bethany. Bethany, how about you tell me where you think our bananas come from? I can hear you, Bethany. Go ahead, love. I think they come from Mexico. Oh, that's a good guess. All right, thank you, Bethany. Now I'm gonna go back. I am going to go back to our screen. Okay, here we go. Everybody mute yourselves. I I, yep, I know, but we can't, I can't choose everybody. So I'm trying to get every a chance from everybody, okay? So where do our bananas come from? So here's here's the world, right? This is what our map looks like. Um, we had somebody guess uh, Hawaii, which Hawaii is, you can't really see it, but it's like over here somewhere, right? We had somebody guess Mexico, all right? So we have like Mexico right here. And then we had somebody say the tropics. Well, I'm gonna try to spell it out here really quick. Um, so we have the tropics. Oh, spelt it wrong, just kidding. <laughs> tropics okay and then we had two people say the farms okay so here we go we're gonna talk about where they come from the number one place that our bananas come from are guatemala okay the number two place is ecuador all right the number three place is costa rica and the fourth place is colombia can you believe that? Look how far away our bananas come from. Here we are way up here in New Mexico, right? Ish, right there. And our bananas come from all the way down here. Imagine if you lived way up here in New York, that's a long journey for bananas to go to get to your house so that you can eat those bananas. And let's go back to what happens if some of those bananas get wasted. Could you imagine all of the time and resources that it yeah. took to get those bananas all the way from Ecuador, all the way up to New York for them to potentially get brown spots on them and be thrown in a trash can? That's pretty crazy, right? So we're going to take a little journey with these bananas, okay? Hold on really quick. We're going to watch one more video, all right? It is not super long, but it's really cool. This is, I, I didn't even know some of this. So you guys be ready, okay? You should be able to hear just like last time. This is all about where our bananas come from, okay? Here we go. We travel to Ecuador, the world's largest exporter of bananas. Here, banana plantations stretch as far as the eye can see. It takes nine months for the bananas to fully grow. To protect them from insects, they're covered in plastic bags the entire time. You do not want any of those bugs or insects arriving into the United States. Anthony Serafino is vice president of banana importer EXP Group. I'm looking for bananas banana that's about eight inches in length. It's long, it can easily be ripened. Workers cut the bananas down and then haul the bundle with padded carriers to protect them from bruising. The bundle is then attached to this cable system. These bananas right now are heading right to the packaging facility. The facility is right in the middle of the farm. That's where the bananas will be inspected. They look great. They're gonna be chopped. The bananas are washed and then put into a production line. It's here where the stickers are applied. Take a look. Those are our very own Inside Edition bananas. Our bananas are loaded into a truck and then sent to this port in the city of Guayaquil, the largest port of Ecuador. That's where our bananas embark from Ecuador through the Panama Canal, past Haiti and Cuba, and up the East Coast, finally arriving in New York City. That's 3,500 miles. After two weeks at sea, our bananas have finally arrived from the tropics to this snowy port in Red Hook, Brooklyn, where you can see tons of cargo being unloaded from the ship. 
But the journey isn't over. The container with our bananas is loaded onto a truck and arrives here at EXP Group's headquarters in New Jersey. Remember how green our bananas were back in Ecuador when they were harvested? All these weeks later, they're still green. They need to be ripened. Ripening could take anywhere from 72 to 96 hours. They're loaded into this room, aptly called a ripening room, where they pump in humid air and a harmless ripening gas called ethylene. Ethylene infuses the fruit to allow the ripening process to hasten. We set our bananas aside in the ripening room and recorded the process with time-lapse cameras. Over the course of 96 hours, our bananas become perfectly ripe. There you have the two boxes of the Inside Edition bananas. So these are ready to go. I can I can do a taste test here. Yeah, taste test. Let me know. Here, you have one too. Delicious. Oh yeah. What do you They're think? Good. Sweet. Finally, our bananas are delivered to the grocery store shelf. Mmm. Good, right? Very sweet. Mmm, tastes good. What do you think? Yum. Yum. Inside Edition bananas. Get them while they last. We travel to. All right, so, um, pretty interesting, right? I mean, that's a long journey. That's a lot of resources to put that banana into the grocery store where you live so that you can eat that banana, right? That's a lot. That's a lot for us to do. So we have to pay. We have to think about that when we say, do I want to waste this banana or this apple or these grapes or anything that wasn't directly grown in your backyard? There's so much that goes in to getting that piece of food into your grocery store, okay? So we just have to be conscious of that. We have to really pay attention to what, what we can and can't salvage by putting it in a compost pile, okay? I see a couple of people raising their hands. We have a few minutes. I have one other quick thing I wanna talk about, but I wanna um, go for questions. So Skylar is raising his hand. Skylar, you wanna unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, I want uh, since since I was watching the roadrunner and the coyote, I want to rewatch that. No, you can't. I can show oh, you. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, so you can. I'm gonna send everybody the recording of the class. Okay, Skylar. So you'll be able to rewatch it with the recording of the class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Pause. Okay. So Brooklyn and Adeline, it looks like you guys have something you want to say. Why does it the ripening gas they put in there harm the bananas um because it's actually just a natural gas that helps the natural process of the banana ripening it's not something that's harmful to the bananas or harmful to you it's something that would happen in nature they're just making it happen a little bit quicker that's a really good question though adelina you have a question love yeah so Um, I have cousins that live in Hawaii. You do? You did yeah. call on someone. I did. I called on Adelina. That's really cool, Adelina, that your cousins live in Hawaii. Um, okay. Now I'm going to try my best because this person is named Sarah on my screen. So I can't actually um, tell what her name really is. You didn't mean. But she's got you a pink shirt on. on someone. She's got a pink shirt on and she's got a necklace on. And if you want to ask a question, love, you Someone can unmute yourself can and you can, um, you can go ahead and ask your question. There you go. How, when it's traveling to New York, how does it not get old? Yeah, so that's a really good question too. So while it's traveling to New York, while it's inside those containers, they're actually temperature controlled. And so they keep them at a certain temperature so that they don't go bad. Um, so that's, that's why they're still green, even though they've traveled for two long weeks, all the way from Ecuador, all the way up to New York, they don't actually turn green because it's a temperature controlled environment. That's a really good question. Thank you for asking that question. I have something. I okay, have something Michaela, go ahead and ask a question. Um, not a question, but I have something to add to what you said. Okay. Um, it's also because um when they move, they are not they they pick them before the wipe. Yes. Yep. So then when they move, they just need to make sure it's a temperature that the gases that are most likely in the air 
all that making them feel like they're wiping You're very because right. They only wiping it once they get to um to where they're gonna um, be. Yeah. Yep. Fabulous. So I had a question about why um why can't why why aren't we able to grow bananas? Someone didn't call on okay so why aren't we able to grow bananas and that's why do you think Michaela um it's too cold it's It's probably too cold we also live in a very dry environment so when we're talking about a tropical environment it's very humid it has a lot of moisture in the air and it's really really warm all the time and if you step outside And you step outside of New Mexico and it's not humid here and it's not warm all the time, right? And sometimes it's so, so, so hot here. So I think sometimes it's too cold and sometimes it's too hot. And then there's not enough moisture in the air for us to be able to grow bananas. But that's a good question, Michaela. Would Yuma be a place to grow bananas? Because they're very warm and they're very humid. Maybe, possibly, I'm not sure. But they're very, very, very warm. Very yeah, it's true. It's true. All right, go ahead and mute yourself, Michaela. I am going to see anybody else raising their hand that has not had a chance to speak today. Not had a chance to speak. If you've already spoken and you um, want to say something else, put it in the group chat. Stone, go ahead. What do you got, bud? Uh, where what did you say, Stone? I had a lot of things. I wanted to say. Okay, let's choose. And you didn't things. even go on. Okay, okay let's choose call. two things that you want to share. I had okay, a good example of food waste. Oh, and okay. Our cauliflower got brown. So I think that's a good example of food waste. Your cauliflower got what? Brown. Brown. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so could you put your cauliflower in the compost pile stone? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you absolutely could. Okay, what's one other thing you want to share, Stone? Well, oh, I saw that the celery got brown. Yes, the celery. So I thought it got dead. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Stone, for sharing. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm glad that you got to talk today. Okay, so we, um, okay, I'm going back. Hold on really quick, guys. We're going to close this really quick. We're going to talk really quick about food that we can grow here in New Mexico because we talked a little bit about, because Michaela asked, why can't we grow bananas here, right? And so there are some food that are really easy to grow here in New Mexico. Um, and you can grow them in relatively small spaces. So you don't have to have a big backyard and you don't have to have a yard at all. You could grow them in a pot if you wanted to on your porch. Um, and here are some foods. I'm gonna go through some of them that we can easily grow here in New Mexico. And so we're gonna talk about some of these next week as we move into our gardening section. Okay, guys, number one, tomatoes. These are tomatoes out of my garden an entire basket full of tomatoes out of my garden. Okay, that's one thing that we can easily grow. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips and tricks on how to do that. Green chili, I'm roasting all that green chili came off of green chili from my garden. Okay, they grow really well here in New Mexico. Cucumbers, look at all of those cucumbers. And what I did is I turned all of those cucumbers into pickles. And so you can grow cucumbers pretty easily here in New Mexico. We're going to talk about that next week as well. That's why why we grow so many of um, the chilies in the world. It's true. You're very right. And I'm the chili state. Yes, Michaela, you're right. And in this picture, you can see on the bottom, there's some yellow squash and zucchini and more cucumbers and some jalapenos, okay? And of course, tomatoes. So those are all out of my garden. Um, and those are some of the things we're going to talk about next week. So I, um, I'm i going to leave you guys now pretty quickly, even though normally I chat with you a little bit after class because I got to get out of here today. But You're going to have directions sent to your parents about a very easy compost pile that you can start at home, okay? I know some of you are already on it and some of you are already excited about that. And that makes me super, super happy. Ask questions if you have them. You can send me an email if you have questions about your compost pile, okay? 
Number two, I want you to start thinking about what do you want to try to grow? If you've never grown a plant that gives you something to eat, right? Like a tomato or a cucumber or something like that. What is it that you want to try to grow? Because next week we're going to talk about the plants that we can grow here in New Mexico, how we keep them watered because we don't have a lot of water here in New Mexico. So we don't want to waste our water, right? What are some easy ways to keep them watered? How do we give them shade? Because sometimes our, our sun is way too hot here in New Mexico for some of these plants, right? And then what can we do with them after we pick them? All the yummy tasty treats that we can have with all the food that we can grow out of our own gardens, okay guys? So I am gonna call it good for the day. I'm gonna say goodbye. If you have questions, I want to hear them, but you have to email me this time, okay, guys? I need you to email me. Your parents have my email address. If you have a question about today's class, don't hesitate, guys. That's what I'm here for. Send me the question or send me the comments, okay? And we can have a talk either on an email or I can even call you and talk to you if that's what you need me to do, okay? So it is Tuesday, 12 o'clock. I am signing off. I will see you next Tuesday. Hey, Focus bye. on compost piles, okay, guys? Think about all the good things that are coming from ah. composting all that food. All right. Bye, bye. guys. Bye. See you later. later. See you next Thank week. You. Bye. Bye. Bye, Genesis. Bye, Amy.